Welcome to the Library Connection. I'm Tracy Thomas, Director at B.B. Comer Library, and I want to thank you so much for being with us today. It's always fun to come to you and bring shows to you that are special to us and close to our heart about things that help us further the mission at the Comer Library, which is to educate, enrich, and entertain the people of the greater Sylacauga area. And so we also appreciate TV 47 for being such a great partner in our mission. Today we have a really special show. It feels kind of funny to come to you and say I'm the director of the B.B. Comer Library when we have Dr. Shirley Spears <laughs> sitting here beside us, which she needs no introduction, but she's going to get a great introduction. As most of you know, she's been the director at the Comer Library for 33 years and three months. <laughs> and uh, my quarter there. <laughs> I want to make sure we account yeah. for all of it because she certainly deserves it. Um, Dr. Spears has just recently retired, and today we're going to talk to her about her career and her plans for the future. So thank you for coming on. I know it's early to get you up in your retired time. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm still used to getting up at five, so I hadn't made that transition yet. So I'm glad to be here, Tracy, and very pleased. Well, you know this interview is special to me because I wouldn't be sitting here without you. So no, thank you. I, I owe it all to you, and um, I just want people to get an idea of who you are and when you came to Sylacauga, you know, all the details about you coming to work at the Comer Library. Of course, most people know who your husband is, but I'll let you tell that. And you just tell us what you want us to know about your history and how you came to be here. Well, Tracy, I have been a librarian for a long time. I've been a librarian for 45 years. So uh, there's no way to talk about being a librarian in Sylacauga without telling how I did get started. And I, I'm just really proud of uh, my heritage and my background and the fact that I came from around here and that I am part of this culture and I uh, feel very much at home having been here for a long time felt at home coming back because I was gone for a while I was brought up in Blue Springs and then Marble Valley and I, of course I went to Fayetteville School and of course Ted's always teased me about my attachment to after all these years my tremendous attachment to Fayetteville School and I've been so proud to see the growth there and to see that school really take off and impacted by the lake culture and it has grown and become such a wonderful school, but it was a wonderful school in the days when I went. We had all those teachers that believed that we were could learn. It didn't matter that we were poor and that we were sharecroppers' children. They just treated us so well and I, I just felt that I really benefited from having those wonderful school teachers at Fayetteville School. I did go on down to uh, Alexander City after I got out of high school and went to work at Russell Mills. And while I was there, I, you know, sometimes you just look back at your life and you know that God's had such a hand in everything that happens to you. And the junior college uh, concept came into being under uh, Governor George Wallace. And the Russells gave the land, the golf course land in Ellis City, and they built a junior college down there. But I walked out to the old hospital where they had set up temporary quarters and registered to go to school because I'd always wanted to go to school. Next five years, I went to school at night and worked at Russell Mills. So having that in my background, you'll get some idea of how proud I've been of all the jobs I've had. That was the best job I ever had when I went to work at Russell Mills. And I enjoyed my years there and did some other things, but finally went down to Auburn in 1970. And I finished up in five quarters at Auburn and came back to Benjamin Russell High School where I had been working and went to work as a librarian there because it was the only job open. I had trained to teach history, and of course I think that's reflected in my years as a librarian and my love of history, but that's kind of how I wound up being a librarian and being at Benjamin Russell High School. I stayed at Benjamin Russell as a librarian, school librarian, high school librarian. We were grades 10, 11, and 12 back then. I was there for 12 years and enjoyed my work with that age group, uh, enjoyed trying to provide resources where you didn't have much money and you had to be creative and work with teachers and try to come up with ways to help kids to have the resources that they needed. That was so different from now in the computer and world and the technology and the wealth of materials that you have to work with and to learn and to help you with your learning was coming into that school library setting. So I enjoyed being there for for 12 years before I finally got into public library work. Well, I think your story is so endearing because we, we know from not just hearing you talk but seeing the hard work you've put in that you really did come from a very modest, you know, uh, beginning. And I'm just so proud of what all you've accomplished and putting yourself through school and you know what it takes to work hard. And I think that all of that 
helped you get to where you are today? You were willing to put the work in. Well, I think uh, I think everything is relative, and uh, most of the things I've done since the days that I was brought up on a cotton farm have seemed pretty easy to me. <laughs> it seems a lot easier to do most of the things that I've done than to do the hard work that it takes to make a living on a farm because that's what we did. We lived down in Marble Valley and farm for our living. So coming out of that culture, it does prepare you for the world of work and it prepares you to love to have something you love to do. So I've been very lucky to to have work that I have loved all the years, all these years. Well. Tell us about Dr. Ted Spears because I want to make sure we get him in there because I know that he's been such a driving force behind always pushing you to pursue things and to do greater things. So we'd be really remiss if we didn't talk about him. Well, Ted came to work in Talladega County in 1983. And he came to work as assistant superintendent with Talladega County Schools. And meanwhile, during those years in between, I had gotten my doctorate at Auburn University and all of the above, and still never thought about working in a public library because I was, was a school librarian. But Mrs. Hallie Light at the First Methodist Church, we joined the First Methodist Church, and so she got in touch with me and told me that Mrs. Carolyn Goff was about to retire and asked me if I was interested in maybe applying for the job as the public library director there. So we had moved to Sylacauga and we're living in Sylacauga. So I thought about it and I thought, well, you know, I, I really kind of explored it because I had not been fortunate enough to use a public library growing up and I didn't know much about public library work. So I, I did uh, do my research and I thought, well, I have a chance doing this to work with a budget and with personnel and with, oh boy, did I, did I have a chance to work with a building. <laughs> so there were just elements to being a, a public library director that was not there in working with the school library work where you're in a setting where you're a part of, somebody else does all that for you, you know, that's, that's not a part of what you do in that setting. So that appealed to me to go into a different setting. And then too, that building was five years old and it was a beautiful 21,000 foot building and it, it was just still, it was just so pretty and I came down to look at the building and that kind of sold me too. And of course Ted was pleased uh, that, you know, that I had found a job right there, right here at home and something that I could uh, feel like that I was taking my new doctorate and mm -hmm. going into a new setting and trying something different and so he encouraged me as he always had. He encouraged me to try to do something that I thought I might like to do. So I decided that I would uh, try being a public library director. So that's kind of how I got started with that. It's just being sort of solicited and deciding that it offered a new opportunity for me. And, and there's so much more to the story. And we're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, we're gonna hear more about Dr. Spears coming to the Comer Library. Hi, it's Shawnee McNeil at South First Bank. This is a great time for you to buy or build a new home or maybe refinance your present mortgage. Our rates are the lowest they've been in years and that means saving you money. We've been helping our customers become homeowners in this area for nearly 70 years, and we can make our approvals right here in the office, and that means saving you time. We're located here in downtown Sylacauga. Come in and find South First, a better way to bank. Member FDIC, an equal housing lender. At Marble City Pharmacy, we're more than just a drugstore. Our gift shop boasts some of the most unique treasures you'll find anywhere. Come in and browse the vast selection of jewelry, purses, clothing accessories, and crafts. Let our friendly staff help you find that special card or gift for any occasion. Our dollar wall features selected sale items, and we stock a wide variety of specialty items. And if it is a drugstore you need, Marble City Pharmacy was named the 2015 McKesson National Pharmacy of the Year. Visit us today at Marble City Pharmacy. Connect to nature. Connect to family. Camping World is here to help you make lasting memories. With thousands of parts and accessories available, service nationwide and RVs as low as $109 a month, Camping World has it all. Now is your time to connect to excitement with savings on thousands of RVs. Plus, enjoy Good Sam Elite membership with every RV purchase. Visit your local Camping World Supercenter or shop CampingWorld.com today. The Allen Companies of Sylacauga with three locations to serve you. Highway 511, Highway 280, and Main Avenue. For all your convenience store needs, ice, drinks, snacks, and of course, some of the lowest priced gasoline at the pumps. 
It's the Allen Companies of Sylacauga. Highway 511, Highway 280, and Main Avenue. It's the Allen Company Convenience Stores. Welcome back to the Library Connection. I'm Tracy Thomas. Today we're talking with Dr. Shirley Spears. Dr. Shirley Spears is our newly retired um, library director at the B.B. Comer Library. And it almost hurts to say that. I don't. It's just been <laughs> such a mainstay for so many years and you've been such a big part of of my career and, and my development in the library world, but I know this is a, a step you're excited about. You've got lots of new things coming up, um, but we've been talking in the first segment about you coming to work in Sylacauga at the Comer Library and um, the transition that you made from working in Alexander City, moving to Sylacauga, going from school work to public library work. Mm -hmm. You had a lot of transition, and I know that when you came in, you were replacing um, Miss Carolyn Goff. So talk a little bit about that transition from you know moving into a world that you had to kind of feel your own way around. Well, Miss Goff had been at the library for 19 years, and uh, she was a, a nurse by profession, and she had. Her husband had died. He was a country doctor down in Rockford, and uh, she, I, I had such great respect for her. I thought she was a, just a wonderful woman, and I learned quickly how supportive she was. And uh, after she left the library, and I did take the library, and she was a little bit younger. Than, uh, she was into her old age also. Her health had gotten bad, but she was younger, I realize now, than I am now. So I worked a longer, a couple of years longer than Miss Goff did. She was 72. And Ms. Goff, though, had pulled off the building project. She and Mayor Curtis Lyles and with Virginia West help and then that wonderful board, you, you, if you've got Donna Dickey and Hallie Light and Harry Brown and at that time I think it was Wendell Morris and it was just a fabulous library board and a mayor that was in council that was supportive of going to a, a bigger, better library. and. So all the stars lined up right for Ms. Goff, and Virginia West was doing urban renewal. So anyway, the library came to be put in the place where I think it should have been put, and that's downtown there right across from City Hall. We're right in the center of what I call the grid, where you've got your educational, professional um, services, all kind of uh, governmental services, all down through about a two or three block area. So with us being right there in the heart of that, I think it puts us in a, a really good place. But coming into that library, as I said earlier, the, the building was beautiful. But there was a great deal of work to be done with programs and services and materials and that kind of stuff. So trying to acclimate and learn the difference between public and school and try to get to work on some of the things that I thought did need to be done. And just like you've been in now for a couple of weeks and you immediately start seeing things that you think need to be done. And so you start, you just get to work on them when you're young enough to do that. And I think I was 40 years old when I came to the library. So anyway, I just worked uh, tirelessly for several years trying to build up the materials and the services and that kind of thing, not worrying too much about a building that was still relatively new. But then uh, I got involved in civil work in the late 80s and with John Floyd. He, asked me to chair the Alabama reunion uh, celebration that was going on in uh, the statewide. So I liked that and it worked out well. I got a little taste of working for the entire community. And I also came to realize that the library is a part of the total community and you have to be concerned about the total community before you can truly be a really good librarian. I think it's important to realize that and that came with me for me with time that we weren't an island, we were part of what was going on with everything. So that was a good thing. And then Mr. Harry had always wanted to set up a library foundation, and he'd mention it to me every once in a while. And we, uh, we, uh, the school set their foundation up, I believe, in, oh gosh, about three years before we set our foundation up. We came in in 91 and set our library foundation up, and we started what would turn out to be a long journey a 12-year journey toward raising money to redo the library and to expand it. By that time, with our building having been in place for 10 years, we knew that we needed uh, a different kind of infrastructure in the building. We needed more space. We needed to be providing service of a different type because, for one thing, we had gotten uh, involved in a lot of programming. And uh, Tracy, I think it's a landmark that you came to work in 1993. And we had sparse children's services, as you know from looking back at that, we had done summer reading and uh, those kinds of things. 
but you brought a whole new dimension to uh, youth services for us and we started expanding all that. We put a teen program in place and uh, Tracy just set up a lot of different programs and we started working hard to expand all that. So always down through the years, uh, Tracy was there for 15 years with us and I think that just about every significant thing that we've done, she had a hand in setting it up and making it come forward, so we're so glad to have her back in it. It's a great deal of pride for me to call you the library director. It's not painful at all. It's a, a wonderful experience for me. Now, something happened to us along the way with Tracy with working hard on new services and then, too, she had gotten some national awards for her teen program, and when you get a little taste of being recognized and mm -hmm. the whole world knowing that you're really working hard and doing something good, it's a very invigorating thing for you. So we started working. She finished her BS, and she finished her MLS at the University of Alabama along the way during this uh, long period of time and came back to work as the assistant director finally before she left um, on her maternity leave uh, to when before Jackson was born. Mm -hmm. But one thing that we got into that sort of changed the world for us, and it is one of the highlights and the loves of my life, my library career life, is the Brown Bag Lecture Series. We had done programs from the beginning, different types of adult programs along the way, sort of what hit or miss, whatever came up. We'd participated in the big uh, Read Alabama series in the late 80s, and, but about 94, 1994, we started really, really working on Brown Bag Lecture Series, the noon concept, so that became a big thing for us. And then technology came in 94, big deal for us. And then, of course, the building project remained the goal, and we spent 12 years raising the money, over $2 million, to try to help bring that to fruition. And of course, we went back into the newly remodeled library in December, on December the 1st of 2003. So that's a lot of things that I just kind of lumped together there. But they're all part of the big puzzle, I think, that makes up such a fabulous library as the one that we have, are the things along the way that we saw them, we tackled them, we conquered them, so to speak. So there were a lot of landmarks. Nobody played a bigger part than Tracy Thomas and the total library staff. It's a good staff. They're very receptive to the public. They're very friendly and they know how to carry out a program of service. Along the way I always had Ted with me and I always had that wonderful library board. Then after 91 I had that wonderful foundation board because we do have a wonderful uh, about a 15 member foundation board that works with us. Well we had good leadership to make those things happen. We're going to take another quick break and when we come back we're going to hear more about setting up the foundation and working with the building project. We hope you'll join us. Hi, it's Shawnee McNeil at South First Bank. This is a great time for you to buy or build a new home, or maybe refinance your present mortgage. Our rates are the lowest they've been in years, and that means saving you money. We've been helping our customers become homeowners in this area for nearly 70 years, and we can make our approvals right here in the office, and that means saving you time. We're located here in downtown Sylacauga. Come in and find South First, a better way to bank. Member FDIC, an equal housing lender. At Fort Williams Pharmacy, you won't find motor oil, garden hoses, or mountain climbing gear. Nope, they don't have that. What they do have is a professional, friendly staff that understands your needs. Filling prescriptions is their primary business, and they take it seriously. They also have a drive through window for your convenience and free local delivery. Most of all, Fort Williams Pharmacy knows your time is valuable, so when it's time to fill your prescriptions, you need it done fast, friendly, and accurately. Fort Williams Pharmacy, our family, caring for your family. Connect to nature. Connect to family. Camping World is here to help you make lasting memories. With thousands of parts and accessories available, service nationwide and RVs as low as $109 a month, Camping World has it all. Now is your time to connect to excitement with savings on thousands of RVs. Plus, enjoy Good Sam Elite membership with every RV purchase. Visit your local Camping World Supercenter or shop CampingWorld.com today. Coosa Valley Medical Center, one of the top 10 hospitals in Alabama, is also Sylacauga's largest employer. Services from the emergency room, to surgery, to cancer treatment, to post-stroke care. You won't believe what's right in your backyard. It's Coosa Valley Medical Center in Sylacauga. So, if you're sick, 
in Alabama, choose one of the top 10 hospitals in Alabama. That is Coosa Valley Medical Center. Welcome back to the Library Connection. Today we're talking with Dr. Shirley Spears and of course Dr. Spears was our library director for 33 years and three months and we're talking <laughs> about some of the milestones in your career along the way and before the break you were talking about the brown bag series and mm -hmm. I think that's one of the things that really highlighted for us the need to do a building renovation and an addition. So I want to let you talk about some of the some of the things that happened in brown bag that let us know it was time to move forward with an addition. Well, I think brown bag does tie directly into that because we were upstairs in the only meeting room we had, which is the whetstone room, and we could you know, gracefully seat about 60 people in there. And we, we began to really have large crowds to come into the brown bag program. And we had known that there was not a lot of sentiment in parts of the town to expand the library because we did have the 21,000 foot library, which is a large library for mm -hmm. a small town. but. I think people began to realize that we really needed more space because they were sitting on top of each other and, you know, I, can, I could hear people say, well, you know, I believe they do need some more space. We had this tremendous desire also, Tracy, to serve business and industry. And we wanted to be able to accommodate in-service programs for them. And, of course, you know our story with Bluebell that they've trained, they can, they've trained over 200 employees at a pop with us. And, They've meant so much to us, but then we've meant so much to them, too, having the facility that we've got. We had won the uh, National Award for Library Service in 2000, which was, of course, an occasion that none of us ever forgot. It's just mm -hmm. like it was yesterday, because we were one of four in the United States of America to win that award. And it really helped us with our fundraising. Uh, strangely enough, it sort of validated who we were in many ways, and we really began to get some significant donations toward our building project. And then we were able to put together a plan to do proposals and to ask for money. And we raised over a million dollars of that money with people deciding to lend their name to what we were doing. We had the naming opportunities in the building. So that building project was really, really a huge uh, undertaking. And uh, it was one that I guess it would be hard not to be, for that not to be the shining star and the one that we are so proud of, the board, the the library staff, and uh, I'm, of course me, I'm very proud of that project. So that was a great day for us. And I remember, too, just to throw a few things in along the way, how important Tracy was and her husband Greg were to that project because we had to move out of the building and they tore that building all to pieces. And we moved down to the Western Auto and set up a really neat little library down there that I enjoyed very much being in that small building for a while. But I, I, I just remember uh, Tracy doing the drawings and planning how to bring the books back in, get them in the right place, and all those wonderful talents that she had that she brought to the table and the community. Gosh, the community was so good to us. The basketball team at the high school and Bluebell using their trucks for us and the city coming in to help us out. And there was just, we couldn't, we could not have done it if it hadn't been a community effort. And I truly believe that this community loves the B.B. Comer Library. And I think they feel that it's their library and that they have a stake in it. And indeed they do. Well, I was just going to add to that. Um, you talked about the naming opportunities in the building. And it just, it just makes me feel so good when I walk through that building and I see those names. And I think about each person that donated to that project had a reason or a motivation that they wanted to be part of it. And it just, it's just a validation that the community wanted this and we had community support. And it, I don't know, it's just really nice to walk through and see those names. It is, and I like so much. One of my favorite things to do over the years has been to do the tours of the library and to take people through. And now, of course, we show off our beautiful sculpture and our Avondale paintings and all the wonderful things that we've acquired over the years. But I like to tell them about those names and those people like Mr. Harry Brown and Nan Ellen and Ms. Lane and uh, all those families, David Foote and, you know, the room that he did for his mother and the love that went into uh, deciding to part with personal money to give to something to make it happen was such a precious thing to me and it was so validating, of, it seemed to me, of the hard work that the staff had done for so many years. So the building project was very special. Now, what we've done with that building since then, I don't know how this community ever got by without the B.B. Comer Library. Mm -hmm. In its present state, with that auditorium and those meeting rooms, 
it just means so much to the community. When we came back into the building, we put in a full service children's department. And upstairs, it's all just about all youth services. So that's a fabulous thing for the community and beyond because we do serve parts of four counties. And I think that's great. Being a rural girl, I'm all about us serving the edge of Clay, the edge of Coosa, the edge of Shelby, and bringing people to town because it's an economic impact. It yes. truly is. Well, I just think you had a gift, Dr. Spears, to make all those people that donated see your vision for it, and, and that's a real talent. So, Well, it was um, a wonderful pleasure to try and to be successful. You don't get any better than to feel that God has blessed an endeavor that you felt so strongly about, and I do feel that uh, I've told you many times that I think I have worked where God intended for me to be. And I really praise Him and appreciate the fact that I've had the opportunities that I've had to run a library that has been meaningful to the community. It's been very precious to me and will continue to be. Well, we have about two minutes left, and I hate for you to summarize in two minutes what you plan to do with your retirement days, but you're not through working, and so we want to let people know what you plan to do with your time now. Well, I don't really expect a whole lot of difference in my life per se being retired because I want to get up every day with a purpose on my mind regardless of what it is. And I have been so fortunate to have Tracy agree to come back to the library, I don't really think I could. I probably would have been the oldest librarian on record if she hadn't agreed to come back and bring her base of knowledge and her experience with the library to the table so that I could feel really good about leaving and feel that I was putting the library in somebody's hands that knew the community, had proven that she was a, a person who had a lot of stamina, a lot of perseverance, and Tracy has certainly proven that with her personal life and her professional life. But I am going to continue to work with the Library Foundation, with the Library Board, and with Tracy's Blessing. And it's been important to me to do that. I've raised funds and run the foundation for 25 years. And I've enjoyed every minute of it, and it will be a blessing to me to continue to do so. And I'm glad to have that to do. Now, having said that, I hope I can sleep a little later. <laughs> I hope that I can spend a little bit more time with my family and with my friends than I have in the past because anybody that knows me knows that what I've done for the last 33, 30 years and whatever, 33 years and whatever, what I have done is focus, focus, focus on the B.B. Comer Library and been so lucky to have a husband like Ted who focused right along with me and other people like you and the library staff to help. So thank you for the opportunity today to talk a little bit about um, that third of a century that I have spent of my life in the town's library. Thank you, Tracy. Well, thank you for being a wonderful mentor. It's no secret that I owe it all to you, and I love you, and I appreciate you, and I have tremendous respect, as do many people in this community. So thank you for being with us today. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you, and thank you so much for joining us today on the Library Connection. <laughs>